Welcome to this introduction to our paper published at the Description Logic Workshop in 2023, which was created by us, Patrick Kobmann from the University of Amsterdam, and together with me, Tobias Jorn from the University of Oslo. In our project, we are in general concerned with, uh, with underwater robots. So here you can see a typical problem that we would like to solve. In the top left corner, we have an autonomous underwater vehicle. So this is the autonomous robot that should solve the mission described by this problem. We divided the world into a grid to make things a little bit easier. What you can also find in the world is a lot of underwater infrastructure. So here we have tanks, we have sections of pipes, and on some of the pipes, there are also valves that are currently as this initial state looks like in an open position. Also, as you can see, some of the pipes have leakages where there's some failure of the pipes and you can see some little bubbles. The last thing that you can see here are some walls or other underwater obstacles where the robot cannot pass through in order to solve the mission. The idea for the mission here is that the robot should close all the valves such that none of the tanks is connected to some pipe segment with a failure in order to stop the leakage of whatever is contained into this, these tanks. If we look at this problem, we see that there are two kind of uh, different aspects to the problem that we need to capture to have an automatic solution uh, for this problem. The first thing is the thing that you can see right here. There's a world with different objects that are connected in certain ways to each other. And there's an initial state, which is depicted here. And we have the goal of closing the valves such that no tank is connected to some pipe segment with a failure. And the second aspect is a bit more subtle. And this is that there's some semantic to these different objects that is not obvious, but we as humans intuitively have. For example, the robot can't be at a cell where there's a wall at the same time because those are two physical objects that can't be that can't occupy the same physical space. Same holds with the tanks. The robot can't be in a tank because uh, surely it can't enter one of the tanks. Another thing is that if two segments of pipe are connected to each other, so are in neighboring cells, we expect that fluid can flow from one segment to the other. But if there's a valve in the middle that's blocking the flow of whatever is in the pipes, then the flow shouldn't continue any further. So this semantic information needs to be captured somewhere. And what one can usually use for such things is a so-called knowledge action basis, where we have an owl ontology or ontology in any description logic that captures the semantic of how things behave, what kind of type things are, and uh, how they generally interact with each other, and separate this from the planning aspect, where you describe the possible actions of the robot, so what it can do, how it can manipulate things, and in which situations it can do these actions. Well, this is a common concept, but in general, you have to restrict the fragment of description logic that you can use for the ontology. If it is too powerful, then there's no automatic solving, solver for these kind of um, problems. So what we introduce in our work and what's the novelty here is that you can use the OWL fragment of DL, so pretty much everything that you can express in your OWL language and form an ontology, and use this together with a planning specification and then automatically generate a plan that solves your problem. So the characteristics of our work are as follows. The first thing is that we have a strong separation of concerns. So uh, in other approaches, it's different, but here you can really have your ontology separated from the description of your, of your planning specification and also use for both the typical syntax. So you can use uh, you can use RDF or something else for your ontology, and you can use, for example, PDDL or other common uh, languages for your planning specification. 
as always with these knowledge action bases, the an ontology involves with the planning state. So the initial state, but also each state that is reached during the execution of the plan is captured also by the ontology and it involves uh, in parallel with the state of the planning specification. On contrary, the information also flows in the other direction. So in the planning domain, we can query the ontology and for example, only execute an action of moving to a different cell if this cell is not occupied by another physical object already. What is new is that we support the full OWL DL fragment. So um, this is a very powerful uh, fragment of description logics. And we achieve this by, so -called, by using so-called problem-dependent rewritings. And I'm now going to show you what those are about. So our planning problem consists of many different things. We have on one hand side ontology described in some description logics. And on the other side, we have our planning specification that usually consists of a domain describing the actions that the robot can do and what the consequences of the actions are and the specific problem, which is the initial state that the robot is in and the whole world and what the goal state should look like. We introduced an interface to lock those things together and for example, explain which objects in the planning problem correspond to which individuals in the ontology. Also two different, we use two different languages, so we need to connect them somehow with a little interface in the middle. If we now go and want to solve this planning problem, we need to translate the information that is captured in the ontology in a way that the planner can use it at the end. So what we do is we take the accent from the ontology, use a reasoner based on existing OWL reasoner and to get the relation rules that we can then add to the planning domain and the planner understands those. And the new thing here is that the reasoner also takes into account the specific planning problem that we are going to solve. So the specific objects that we have in our planning problem. Existing approaches did not do that. And that's why they couldn't, but they had to restrict the expressiveness of the logic underlying the ontology. We use here the problem already in this reasoning step. And this gives us the possibility to use this rich uh, DL fragment. The generated rules are simply add to the uh, planning domain, and we can feed this new planning domain together with the original problem that we had to an existing planner and generate a plan. We implemented this whole pipeline, and we already saw quite some promising results. So we compared this pipeline to existing work, and for some of the examples, especially those with a complex ontology, we saw that our approach performed better on some of the examples than the existing approaches. So to sum up, we solved uh, complex planning problems by using knowledge action bases, but we extended those and our model was a clear separation of concerns where we separated the ontology from the planning syntax. Our pipeline supports the full OWL DL fragment for the ontology. And we can only do this by using the problem dependent rewritings. So taking the specific problem that we want to solve into account while doing the reasoning step. And we also have some promising first results for the evaluations that we did with this, with our implementation of the pipeline. If you want to are you interested now and want to read the full paper, you can access it by using this QR code. So thank you for your attention.